on February the 16th, 2009, at roughly 3.40pm, police received a phone call that left them chilled to the bone. And what they saw when they arrived at the scene was something straight out of their nightmares. Hey, hey, everybody, it's me, Shadow Strike, and welcome to Disturbing Stories. I happen to be a bit of a fan of the Strange and Mysterious, and so I figured that I would create a series based on a few disturbing stories that I happen to find an interest in. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy. On October the 21st, 1995, a young chimpanzee who would later go on to be named Travis was born at the Missouri Chimpanzee Sanctuary. And only three days old, he was taken from his mother Susie and was sold to Sandra Herald for $50,000. I assume their family was somewhat rich. The chimpanzee was then named Travis after Sandra's favorite singer, Travis Tritt. He then ended up living with Sandra, her husband, Jerome, and her daughter, Susan. Now, Susan was from Sandra's previous marriage, so she wasn't related to Jerome, but he was a kind enough guy that he treated her just like she was his own daughter. The family was pretty happy. And Travis wasn't exactly your normal chimpanzee. Growing up around humans, he took on quite a few human habits. He would dress himself, water the plants, feed hay to the neighbor's horses. He even loved ice cream and would drink out of a wine glass. One of the Herald's neighbors who often came over to play a wrestle with Travis commented that Travis was better behaved than his nephews. Everyone loved Travis and the Heralds were happy, but unfortunately in 2000, a tragedy struck. Susan, Sandra's daughter, was unfortunately killed in a car accident. And unfortunately in 2004, Sandra's husband Jerome also died, but he died of cancer. Sandra was left quite lonely missing her husband and her daughter, so she took to Travis as her one last remaining family member. She loved that chimpanzee to the point where he was even sleeping in her bed with her. The two were inseparable, but sadly Sandra seemed to be a pretty unlucky person. And her small moment of happiness and relief, she felt, was ruined. One of the few people that Sandra had left in her life was her good friend Carla Nash. The two had been friends for over 30 years. And Travis happened to be quite fond of Carla. But for some reason, that changed. On February the 16th, 2009 at 4.30pm, Travis lost it. Carla had been invited over to help out with Travis. He had been acting weird and Sandra couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. She'd given him some medication for Lyme disease so she figured maybe that was making him act up. So she was hoping that Carla could help. So Carla got in her car, she drove to Sandra's place, she showed up and indeed Travis was acting really weird. Carla then proceeded to grab Travis's favorite toy and handed it over to him and was sitting there with it trying to ease him up a bit, make him a bit happier, calm him down. But what he did next, she did not expect. Travis started growling at her. He was just losing it, getting real angry, and Carla couldn't understand what was happening. She wasn't used to the chimpanzee acting like this. So she continued trying to calm him down, and then he leapt at her. He knocked her to the ground, and he started pummeling her face, and he was grabbing a hold of her eyes and her eyelids and he was ripping them off and he was tearing them away and he was just pounding into Carla. Now San Sandra ran up, she saw what was happening and she started screaming and she's yelling, Travis no get off what are you doing? He hearing Sandra jumped back a bit, was a little shocked so Carla she managed to stumble to her feet and she took off out the door. Unfortunately Travis was a little faster than her, he ran out after her tackled her in the lawn and went back to tearing, up, tearing at her, biting her, ripping out her eyes and eating them. And he was just howling into her. So Sandra runs outside. She sees what's happening. In a panic, she finds a shovel leaning up against the side of her house. She grabs it. She runs back to where Travis and Carla are and she starts smacking Travis over the head. But Travis barely reacts. 
So Sandra's at a loss. She doesn't know what to do. So she drops the shovel. She runs inside and she grabs a butcher's knife. Running back out, she grabs the pun- butcher's knife and she plunges it into Travis's back. Now this Travis reacts to. He stops what he's doing. He turns around and he looks at Sandra in absolute horror as if he's saying, Mom, why did you do that? Now, Sandra, she hated having to do this because she raised Travis. He was like her son and he was all that she had had after losing her only child and her husband. So stabbing Travis felt like she was stabbing herself. Unfortunately, stabbing Travis to try and save her friend only made him more angry and he then turned on Sandra. In a panic, she ran to her car, hopped inside, shut the door and locked it. She got it on her phone and this is where she decided to call the police. She's yelling into the phone, help, help, please, he's eating her, he's killed her, my friend, he's killed my friend, you need to bring a gun, you need to shoot him. And the police are sitting there going, whoa, 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 what's going on? Who's killed your friend? And she's yelling into the phone, my chimpanzee, he's eating her, he's eating her, he's tearing her apart, please bring a gun, shoot him. And she is absolutely distraught. The guy, you can tell the guy on the other end of the line doesn't entirely know what to do, he's sounds kind of confused and a little bit like whoa whoa just calm down can you can you you explain to me what's happening again so eventually the cops manage to figure out what's going on they arrive at the scene where travis is just let loose absolutely he's just carla is unrecognizable she's on the ground in a puddle of blood there's bits of her limbs and flesh strewn across the lawn and she, she she's dead man she looks dead to anyone who walks past to the point where the cops get there and they see it and they can't even tell whether she's a woman or a man. She is that unrecognizable. At this point, this has been going on for around 12 minutes and Travis seems to have enough of Carla and after being stabbed, he's busy running around the property like a psycho. When the police arrive, a man named Officer Frank gets out of the car, he sees what's going on. The chimpanzee, Travis, sees him and runs for him. The officer jumps in his car and Travis is jumping on the window of the car and he's looking at it out at him and in a panic Frank gets his gun and he shoots the chimpanzee four times. Travis drags himself away. It seems that the bullets have finally done damage that the knife couldn't do. He crawls away, he goes back inside the house and leaving a trail of blood behind him he crawls up to his playroom onto his bed and he dies on his bed. The police officers and the medics, they rush to Carla, thinking that, oh, she's dead, there's no way she's alive, but when they get there, she moves. And they see her chest rising and falling slightly, and they realize that Carla is alive. She's been alive that whole time. So the medics, they get her, and they rush her away to the hospital, and somehow, miraculously, they're able to save her life, but at a cost. She couldn't see out of either of her eyes because, well, she was missing some of them. One of her hands was completely gone and the other one had bits missing off of it. She was in a completely damaged state. She had brain damage, so her life came at a cost. In fact, her wounds were so bad that after seven hours of surgery, the hospital had to provide therapy for the staff who had worked on her because of the nature of how grotesque and brutal the wounds were. Despite all of this, however, Sandra Herald commented that she would, that if she was given the chance, she would own a chimpanzee again. She said that unfortunately, what happened with Travis was a freak accident and that couldn't be helped. But she still loves chimpanzees and she still loved Travis and it's very hard for her to continue. She actually uh, died in 2010 on May the 24th, and I believe that Carla is still alive today. Now I'm actually going to play the phone call that Sandra sent into the police. Warning, it is a little bit disturbing, so if you don't want to listen to it, then skip ahead to... And... Yeah. Stand for 911, where's your emergency? Oh, <laughs> What's the problem? Send the police! What's the problem there? The the chip killed my my friend! What's wrong with your friend? What's the problem? 
with your friend. Help! Please! What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Who has a gun? Please, hurry up! He's killing my girlfriend! 241 Rock Road. They're saying someone has a gun. He's trying to kill somebody. Hurry up! They're on the way, but I need to hurry give you more information. Who's doing this? With, with guns! Who has the guns? They'll bring the guns! You gotta kill this chimp! Kill What's the hurry problem there? Hurry up! I need you to talk to me. I need you to calm down. Why do you need somebody there? What? What is the problem? He's killing my friend. Who's killing your friend? Get my chimpanzee. Oh, your chimpanzee is killing your friend. Yes. He ripped your car. Hurry up. With a gun. Hurry up, please. There's someone on the way. Who well, guns? Please, shoot him. The monkey? The monkey's beating up on somebody. Shoot him. Uh, okay, okay. I need you to... Who is... Who is... Who is... Who is... Where are you? Outside? What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey is He ripped her face off! He ripped her face off? He got to me! Please, please! Okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you push yourself away? I don't want the monkey please, attacking you. Please, hurry up! Listen to me! Uh, they're on the way, ma'am. They gotta shoot him! Please! Please, hurry, hurry! Please! Ma'am, ma I need you to calm down. They're already on the way, okay? I know. We're, uh, is the monkey still with your friend, or is your friend still on the floor? I need you to... Ma'am, are you there with your friend? Ma'am, I need you to calm down so you can help your friend, okay? They're trying to attack me. Please hurry. Hurry, please. Are you there with your friend? I need you to help me with your friend, okay? Are you there with your friend? Please. Are you there with your friend? Please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we can try I to help your friend. No. No, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? My, everything. I can't tell you that. No, no. Just breathe, okay? I'm going to stay I with can't. you on the phone until they get there. Listen to me. Please hurry. She's dead. She's dead. And oh, my God. She's dead. Oh, my God. He ripped her apart. Please, God, hurry. Where is the monkey now? He's outside. He's outside? He's in the monkey. He's just... outside. I just We're jumped in the car. Outside. Is your friend also outside? Yeah. Yes. They're both yes. outside. Oh. Yes, please. Is the monkey still there with your friend? He's breathing. He killed her. He okay, is the monkey her. still there yes. with your friend? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is this your monkey or whose monkey yes. is it? It's your monkey. No. It's mine. How, how, do you know how big he is? How, yes. how many pounds? 400 pounds. 400? 200. 200 pounds? You know how old a person your friend is? How old is your friend? Uh, she's, she's dead. How old? How she's, old is she, though? I, I, she's, how old is she? She's 50. She's 50? I, I can't. I, okay, I, what's your name? I need your name. I need you to calm down for me, okay? I know it's hard, but I need you to calm down. I, I know, I know. What's your name? Yeah. What's your name? Sandra. Sandra? Okay, Sandra. They tell them they got to shoot him because I tried stabbing him and he's not, and it made him worse. Okay, Please Sandra. Have them shoot him. They will. Sandra, I already have the fire department close by, okay? So as soon as the police get there, the fire department is going to move in, okay? Please tell them, shoot him because he's going to try to attack me now. Okay. Shoot him! Shoot him! Sandra, stay in your car. Shoot him! Sandra, I need you to stay in your car. Sandra, are you still there with me? They're here, but they're not shooting. No, Sandra, I need you to stay in the car with me. <laughs> no, I tried stabbing him, and, and he's hurt now, too. Just do me a favor. Lock your doors on your car and stay it, there with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. He will rip the doors. Sandra. Right <laughs> Sandra. Okay. Just stay, still stay in your car. Don't leave the car until I tell you to, okay? I know they just shot the monkey. I heard gunshots. No, he's alive. Okay, don't worry. They already shot him. They will continue until he's down. But I need you to stay on that car until I tell you to. So that, everybody, was the disturbing true story of what people call Travis the Menace. Um, if you enjoyed listening to the story, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Strike out.